Hello, welcome to the Holistic Healer Podcast, a podcast dedicated to all things holistic. I am your host, Cheryl Lee. Today's guest, Eli Martyr from the Free Melon Society. He has been a fruitarian for over seven years. He is a stuntman, an athlete, and an educator. Today, we sit down to talk about consciousness, cooked food habits in the raw food space, fermented foods, fruitarianism, and so much more. Enjoy the show. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Holistic Healer Podcast. I am your host, Cheryl Lee. And today's guest is Eli Martyr from the Free Melon Society. Woo! He's been a fruitarian for over seven years. Yeah, stuntman, an athlete, an educator. And look at him. He's like getting it this morning. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. So thank you so much for coming on today. I really, really appreciate it. Oh, no, it's my pleasure. Yeah, my pleasure as always. Always yeah. love chatting with people about this kind of stuff. Uh, anything in the in the health world, health community, it's all good. So yeah, I'm uh, I'm, I'm appreciative and uh, happy happy Thank to be you. here with you today. Thank you. So I always like to start off just for some of my audience members who might not know who you are. If you could just give a little backstory of your journey of how you kind of got into fraternism and into like right now to this present moment, what was your journey? Like, were you raised in that kind of environment? Right. Like, how did this all come about? I definitely, okay, so I definitely wasn't raised in the, uh, we were we were a fairly healthy family, uh, like okay. adopted some fairly healthy tech lifestyle practices, but uh -huh. no, I, conventional, conventional diet, conventional food culture. I'm half Italian, half St. Lucian, and I grew up completely Italian oh. um, on my mother's side of the family. And so the diet was just a mixed mash of all the all the nonsense, right? For, for many many years. Although I I came from a, a very fitness and athletic athletic heavy background, uh -huh. I got into gymnastics and martial arts when I was quite young, and carried carried that through and maintained that all throughout my life. I never really stopped doing it; still do it to this day. Yeah, for um, sure. All, almost all the time. So, uh, yeah, coming from a very, 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 very heavy athletic background and an interest in health and wellness, of course, started to burgeon as I as I got through the years and got into high school, early university, really started to plug away at more and more literature mm -hmm. and uh, got into, uh, you know, I, I consider myself an independent researcher. Uh -huh. And as I, as I was getting better and better at a lot of these kind of uh, skills, like gymnastics and acrobatics and all these different yep. types of athletics, one thing happened and I, I got the idea that I wanted to go into film and use, use those skills uh, for work in film. So I'm a professional stuntman. I've yeah. been a professional stuntman for many years now, over a decade. And, uh, but those interests helped to direct my my research energies into yeah studying how health works what it, right. you know, the, the 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 true the true laws that kind of govern health and vitality mm -hmm. and right. that really captivated my interest so i got got into a lot of spiritual science natural law as well as a whole slew of other subjects how the world works you know, secret societies, uh, metaphysics, geography, geology, ancient history, wow. all this kind of stuff was really, really fascinating for me. And so kind of harmonizing and putting it all together. And I, I slowly started to build more elements of what truly builds up a healthy and well body and into my own practice. And yeah. that evolved into me doing what I'm doing today, just kind of a very simple almost Adam and Eve style right. diet of almost exclusively fruits, some vegetables acceptable, nuts and seeds acceptable, but it's a, it's a raw food uh, exclusive diet of plant foods exclusively, yeah. no processed foods, nothing, just super simple. And that, that, that simplicity has really, really helped me in many, many ways in my life. And Wow. So that's that's where I'm coming from. That's so I'm an independent wow. researcher who's a stuntman and has lived yeah. in, with this exclusive type of almost fruit-based lifestyle uh, completely for 
close wow. to eight years now. <clears throat> so, yeah, because a lot of people in the space who get to fruitarianism, often it's kind of like the stepping stone of vegetarianism, veganism, mm -hmm. then maybe they get to the raw food, but it's the raw gourmet. And then through that, maybe there's like dabbling in uh, raw keto, you know, like it seems for a lot of people getting to the place of fruitarianism where fruit is the, you know, the majority of the diet it's, it seems like you've kind of missed all of that, that journey of all of this, the layers of getting yeah. to that place. Yeah. <laughs> Which yes. is kind of cool. Yes. Did you notice like when you actually started really implementing the fruitarian lifestyle, did you find that you had a lot of withdrawals from cooked food or from the way that you had been eating prior? No, I, I didn't. I didn't. Uh -huh. But it's, uh, what I attribute that to is because I had more systematically gotten rid of the major uh, offenses, okay. uh, the major elements in food culture mm -hmm. that really, really impair and hurt the body. I had dealt with all those demons a long okay. time ago. So they weren't plaguing my, my mind and my tissues okay. when it came around to making the higher refinements or the, the, the better refinements. Right. So I didn't find too, 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 too many uncomfortable, unpalatable detox symptoms when I, when it came to making this switch, mm -hmm. that was, that was more, you know, in my past that I had dealt with that. And so, right. and, and giving up some of those things in way in the past weren't, weren't too difficult. I, I would say the, the thing that really, really helped me is again, just awareness, just like yeah. plugging away at the, at, at the literature, just making right. sure I was informed on every conceivable angle. Mm -hmm. and, and, and getting saturated completely. Yeah, I was going to say like immersing yourself in that kind yeah. of, you know, all of the, all of the, like just educating yourself, you know, that's it. Yeah, yeah. I think that's really important. And I talk about that a lot. You know, it's one thing to think something sounds really good, mm -hmm. but to actually embody it and to integrate it is a whole other layer. And it's, it's that I feel that allows for the sustainability you know, mm -hmm. um, you really need to know what you're doing and, and you need to have a why, you know, yeah, doing yeah, something absolutely. without a why is often just, you know, it, it, those are the things that happen. And to me, it seems that those are the things that are very short lived um, right. when we don't establish that at the beginning of what we're doing. So, yeah, so that's super cool. Did you use um, fasting as well, like any type of like juice feasting or water fasting as a way to kind of cleanse and detox in the early stages? I did. Yes, mm -hmm. I did. Yeah, that was that was definitely part of my routine uh, uh, right from the beginning. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, not right from the beginning of life. I'm saying like right from the beginning of when I started to come right. online to the to the existence of a dietary lifestyle that was mm -hmm. different from what I'd conventionally been shown. OK, so since right. that time. So, yes, fasting, what the, what the way I used fasting was a, a once a week kind of maintenance cleanse. OK, so about 36 hours to, to two days, like 36, 48 mm -hmm. hours around there. Yep. I did that once every week without fail still to this day. I mean, at least at least once during the week, I'm, I'm doing some sort of fasting 24 mm -hmm. hour or more uh, type of, you know, break from food. Uh, so that was every weekend without fail. And then from time to time, I would do just some uh, extended day water cleanse or water fast, excuse me. Or maybe even a mono cleanse of uh, three days of apples, um, right. three days of, you know, just another type of fruit. So mm -hmm. I would play with that every once in a while throughout my plant, my plant based days, you know, prior gotcha. to being a more almost fruit exclusive. So that's mm -hmm. prior to that shift. I would still do that. So, yeah. So it was a mix of maintenance fasts once every week. And, uh, and then every once in a while, I would include a three day fast and maybe, uh -huh. you know, try, try for as long as possible, but usually about, about three days was, was enough at that, yeah. at that period of time. And that's really helpful. I think in, with the ability to, for that sustainability as well, because you really kind of, I had Jeff, Jeff juices on and we, the other day and we were talking about, you know, when you're fasting, it's just clearing out not only that's the physical body, but also the emotional elements and those blockages, right. That tend to come back through cravings and all of these things. Cause oftentimes they're the old, you know, our traumas, our wounding can push us in that direction as well. Right. That's right. Yeah, yeah that's right. Sure. And, 
you know, and it's also, you're also training yourself. It's tra mm -hmm. training in, in much the same way as physical training at the gym or however you exercise. Mm -hmm. It's, it's very much the same way you're teaching your body how to be efficient right. and how to not run out of resources and how to, how to be sustained with no food coming in. Right. And it's a, it's a, it's a hormetic stress. When we say hormetic, we mean it's a, it's a type of stress that's not so overbearing that your body doesn't make a positive adaptation mm -hmm. to your constitution on the other side of the stress, right? right. If it was a uh, maladaptive stress or something that's too much, then then it just hurts and damages you, right? So you wouldn't want that. But a hormetic stress is a good, is a good stress, right. a you stress. So yeah. fasting is doing that. And it's, uh, and that again, very, very helpful because anytime we're improving our efficiency, we are, well, <laughs> we're approve, improving our efficiency. I mean, the, the benefits kind of speak for itself, yeah, right? For That's sure. of course what we want to do. Yeah. yeah, for sure. So when you were kind of venturing on this journey and you were going and reading the literature and cha making changes in your life, how did your social, the social aspects, not only with your friendships, but also with your family, did they change? And was this something that was kind of a sovereign, like in the sense of sometimes keeping this to ourselves, knowing what others are going to say is sometimes the best thing to do. Because mm -hmm. a mm -hmm. lot of times, you know, you'll get like negative feedback and that never helps unless you're really like, you know, you're really strong in what you're doing. Yeah. We tend to be able to be swayed. So what was your experience like during that time? Yeah. The, when you're making, see, throughout the plant-based, you know, regular vegan diet yeah. type of years, not not too too much i mean you can still you can still be social you can still yeah for sure do, yeah you can still do do all these conventional things but i mean i'm I'm not doing any drinking i stopped going to restaurants and doing uh -huh. like the restaurant meals a long time ago so that element changed a little bit and so there was some you know some adjustment there but for the most part everything was was fine it's just once i started getting into what i'm doing now that's when you saw a little bit more of a disruption in just the conventional social life. So it, it changes, it changes. Right. You're making a profound change, a shift mm -hmm. in, in your lifestyle and the type of energy that you're broadcasting. And yeah, yeah some, some friends move away. They, they, yeah. They're not receptive to that anymore. Other people move in. And it, so yeah, there's, a, there's, a, there's an adjustment period. Right. Um, was it difficult to answer your, your question? Yeah. N no, it would. No, it was never difficult. But the reason it wasn't difficult, it was change for sure. Mm -hmm. But the reason it wasn't difficult was because there was the confidence that I had in what I had, what I had learned. Right. Gave me un unshakable faith, like mm -hmm. again, like rooted like a, like a mountain, just in 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 understanding. And right. so nothing in my environment would, could possibly shake me from my foundation. So it, it didn't matter what type of social uh, contempt or right. malignment or aspersions or whatever was coming my way, doubts, you know, any, any of this got a lot of it from family, a lot of it from sure. friends, yeah. a lot of, you know, I'm losing weight, like in the initial period, mm -hmm. I'm starting to lose weight. So yeah. I'm getting all sorts of caution, cautionary notes from yes. people all over. I'm just em accepting it, embracing it, realizing that is, I know that that's going to happen. Like, I know right. that that's going to happen. I know what this process is, even though I haven't gone through it before, I'm, I'm aware that this is likely to happen. And so I'm just accepting. So I was just right. became very accepting of the process. Of, of the natural process of nature running its course in my body. I just surrendered to that completely mm -hmm. and was willing to deal with whatever other social changes come up and how to, yeah. how to make my adjustments. You just make them. Like when, when necessity hits, the how takes care of itself. Right. Yeah, right? exactly. So yes. Yeah. It was, it was not, no, it was not hard, mm -hmm. but uh, were there changes? Yeah, for sure. For sure. For sure. Everything adjusts. Mm -hmm. in, your, in your life. So that's kind of a, a good segue into, um, you know, the, cause you had spoken about weight loss 
And this is what a lot of people experience when they start incorporating, you know, a fruitarian diet for sure, but even just on a living food diet, they'll, you know, they will experience weight loss. And did you, prior to incorporating the fruitarian lifestyle, did you identify with the body? Were you, or over identified with your body image at all? Like was, how did that tie into the weight loss or had you just kind of surrendered to what was going to happen and you weren't overly concerned because a lot of people are concerned about that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that's, yeah, that's such a good question. What let's, let's go with my personal experience first yeah. and say like, where, okay, did I identify with my body very, very yeah. much? So uh, yeah, for sure. Every, every growing, every growing young chap, you know, if you're into fitness and, yeah. and you're starting to get more confident, getting strong, yeah. uh, developing all these, you know, physical talents, right? Yeah, you 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 enjoy looking good, right? You yes. enjoy being strong. You enjoy being able to, you know, to make that expression to the world or make that yeah. statement to the world that they, yeah, you know, I'm I'm one of those people that takes responsibility and loves loves themselves. Like it's a, it's a it's a good thing. What what for me made the change? What allowed for me to start to chip away at how much ego identification I right. placed in my physical self uh -huh. was a, a lot of the, the spiritual aspirations that I yeah. had. Okay. And it came, once it kind of dawned on me that the, the bulk of body mass that I had put on, mm -hmm. uh, it may not actually constitute real me, real mass, like my, mm -hmm. my own matter. Right. And that some of the things that I was doing to, to fuel my body, mm -hmm. right, were, were actually waste and might at some point take away from my ability to be sensitive to the uh, spiritual cues coming from mm -hmm. my higher self, right? To right. the spiritual influence that tries to work itself through your body. It, 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 if, if the body is too stuffed and congested, with the coarse material of the world, mm -hmm. the, the spirit has a hard time yes. uh, playing your physical like an instrument, like the mm -hmm. instrument that it wants to play. Right. Right. Okay. So what, when I when I start to grasp these concepts, I think what happened was it just took a, a, a moment of reflection to to tell myself, all right, Eli, what are your priorities? Okay. What is? Do you want to? have an have internal cleanliness is that your priority or is your external appearance more important than that and so when i really put those two options into perspective mm -hmm. for me personally internal health and internal cleanliness and purity was far 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 more important than simply appearing to the picture of health that cr that culture has created Right. and fashioned right mm -hmm. because as much as we do tend to find health attractive all right mm -hmm. nobody needs to be taught this i mean we all yeah. find health attractive exactly. in, in some capacity right but there is a there is a permutation of that that is culturally created that is not necessarily in line with with true health okay yes so i i just had to make I just had to take that moment and make that distinction. Mm -hmm. So once I made that choice, then I, I'd, I'd solved like 90% of the problem. Okay. Right. From there, yes, there, there is the discomfort of seeing the changes happen before your eyes. Mm -hmm. So like in the mirror, you are, you are losing quote unquote, <laughs> yeah, losing. I, you're not yeah. losing, you're not losing. But you are you are changing the the appearance that you had built up for all of these years. Right. So if you're if you're not prepared for that mentally, and if you're still hung up on the ego identification with that, it will it will play mind games with you. It will it will yeah. shake your confidence. It will shake your foundation. Mm -hmm. So we you, you have to deal with that ahead of time, or or during, and it, it becomes something right. that you are willing to do, right? You're willing to, to accept, right? Yes. A, a, a change or process that's 
that you're willing to embrace in your lifestyle. Mm -hmm. So yes, I did have, yes, of course, I did have some of that ego identification. Yes. But what made the change is recognizing that there are higher aspirations be beyond what my body looks like. Yeah. But I could also have a little bit of the best of both worlds, right? Yeah, if I sure. if I make sure that my internal cleanliness and purity is is the best that I can manage, I'm surely not going to develop a dilapidated, kind of destroyed, awful, hideous body. Like I know that's not. Yeah, gonna for happen sure, either. that's not going to happen. Exactly, I know yeah. that's not going to happen, right? I know. So um, basically, I'm just putting my faith in nature and saying, like, "Listen, right." I know that you have the, the, the potential to beautify a person, right, in, in the most lovely way possible. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put my faith in that. So however, whatever adjustments are coming, lay it on me. And right. I don't care what other people say. So having that faith in the process is not easy to come by. It's not an no. easy mental thing to do. And that's what makes it challenging, like this type of lifestyle challenging for people who are like myself in my position where they are athletes, like good, strong athletes yeah. already, right? Mm -hmm. they, they didn't have to deal with, you know, they're not dealing with crazy amounts of morbidity and, and weight right. loss. Like, yeah, that's not their issue. It's they're already the athletes. That is, is more challenging because sure. now the prospect is coming down from the really stimulated hyper on you know hyper physical yes version of yourself and relenting and calming down the body a bit and it let let the excess kind of squeeze out and then build on better tissue so that process it, it's a very intimidating thing mentally and so to to get through that it it just becomes uh, a matter of being versed in some good literature and yes, understanding the process mm -hmm. before it happens so that you're, you're not being surprised. Right. Yeah. And, um, I mean, I don't know, you know, people coming into this space, I think the spiritual side is something that kind of happens organically for a lot of people that mm -hmm. maybe they weren't so in tune. They may not have had that awareness, but then as they start, you know, letting go of old habits, kind of, more awareness sets in that they may not have, you know, had before. And I feel like as those blockages are removed, then hopefully, you know, the ability to let go of that identification with just the exterior, because the thing of it is, is it's actually, you know, it's quite interesting in the kind of the main literature, a lot of the longevity like doctors out there are actually promoting, you know, muscle mass, for example, as a predictor of longevity. And, but the diet that is also, um, you know, that's recommended happens to be the high protein, you know, low carbohydrate, this kind of thing. And people are in that space. And so I get it. There's like a massive confusion, but people think, okay, well, I should have muscle mass. I should have be carrying around all of this muscle because that equates to health and they're missing yeah. a massive piece of that puzzle, Exactly. you know? <laughs> so, exactly. so when it comes to like strength versus muscle mass versus like natural mus muscle mass ver versus unnatural and what that means because I've heard it say before it's a lot of it is waste it's not true weight in the sense of like the muscle itself we're carrying around a lot of toxins within the fluid in the in the body and that translates to weight so how do you feel like just based on for example that longevity what they're putting out there more muscle mass do you think that strength can be kind of an indicator or a marker instead of having a lot of muscle mass, if that makes sense. Okay. So you're, okay. So you're asking is in terms of longevity, if longevity is, is kind of what we're after, yeah. is, are you asking what would be more important size yeah. of your muscles or yeah. like strength of your right. muscles? Yeah, okay. exactly. Okay. Yeah. 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 Gotcha. Yeah, exactly. Yes. So it, the strength, the strength that you can generate and muscle strength 
in, in, in that becomes much much more important much more mm -hmm. important because it's an it's a it's a kind of like a function of your nervous system right right the amount of tension that you can generate with your muscles uh it, that also influences the uh, the strength of your bones the density of your bones as well so if you're if your body is accustomed to generating for for your body type and for your mm -hmm. body weight strength challenges it's it's gen it's accustomed to generating a lot of strength right. then that will translate into into bone health right. and so even if you are not let's just say you're a really light person and you are accustomed to for whatever your body weight is uh, really 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 strenuous effort right that's and that sh the sheer amount of resistance that you move or weight that you move is not as much as let's just say the, the the muscle bound steroid you know freak out there gotcha. it, it, it it doesn't it doesn't matter that you're moving less weight what's what's important is for your body type the amount of resistance that you're engaged in and and how right. that translates into your own bone health right so mm -hmm, it's mm -hmm. it's the nervous system that we're interested in training and and that translates into whatever muscle size your your internal natural chemistry dictates is appropriate for your body yeah right? so, exactly. so whatever amount of muscle size see the thing we have to remember is that the law of nature the law of vitality is efficiency right. every single operation in your body is calculated to run with a brutal calculated efficiency no waste no excess every operation is done you know, just at the point of maximum efficiency, no more, no less. It, mm -hmm. Everything, your body's always trying to do that. And whenever we start carrying around more than we need, our, your body is going to try, try to bring you back down to wherever is most brutally efficient. Right. And excess muscle mass, just like excess fat is is not advantageous right mm -hmm. you, you, and if your body detects that there is material that it's carrying around that's unadvantageous it's going to try and release it right so right. what we're what we're doing with this type of lifestyle is we want as little body mass as possible no i don't want to say that that, that that's going to give the wrong idea as little body mass as is necessary for our bodies and uh, to be able to do all of the things that we want to do in life. Right. So we need to give enough stimulus to our bodies, like a signal saying, yeah. Hey, you need this amount of strength in your life, in your life to be able to do all these, all the things that you want to do, whatever it is you're doing, rock climbing or swimming or whatever. You just engage yourselves in those activities, feed your body what, what it wants to be, wants, what it wants to nourish itself with the natural foods that are meant for your physiology. Okay. And you, you maintain that your body will adjust with the amount of size that is efficient for what you need and mm -hmm. no more. Right. right? Anything ex excess is just excess. It just yeah. means your metabolism has to work harder than it, than it needs to. And you end up burning out earlier. Right. Right. So it's all, it's all about efficiency. So that's the delicate balance we're trying to, to play is not not having too much excess right coming down to where we we are only using what we really need mm -hmm. and uh and no more than that right so okay now i may i hope i answered did i answer your your your, your question what would be more important so like the strength you did yeah you did okay and i feel okay. like so you know and i think this the, the diet part of it, like the protein centric kind of, you know, message right now is what's, what it said to do is for in, in terms of longevity is like, okay, well, we want to, right. we want to make sure that we, we don't become sarcopenic as we age, yes. you know, we're going to need more protein and that's the best predictor for a long life is not becoming sarcopenic. Well, how do we yes. do that? We need to eat more protein along with of course it you know it it does also the literature says yeah you need to be like resistance training and lifting weight but maybe that's just a good little segue to talk a little bit about protein and how that fits into that piece right right mm -hmm. okay so i think the adjustment that i would make there is look if if we want to make sure that we are maintaining our muscle mass or and our strength 
then that's that's a function of activity. You just keep right. keep moving, right? Mm -hmm. That's that takes care of that. And if we need more pro, like if we need more protein, what's going to happen is that will translate into appetite. Like if we need more, it translates into uh, well, we, you just take in more of the food that is natural to you. You wouldn't <laughs> you wouldn't take the advice that I need more protein and then eat something that is unnatural to your physiology. Like no animal would, would right. ever would dream of doing doing that. Mm -hmm. So what we do is we just adjust our diet to accommodate intake wise, quantity yeah. wise. So we adjust our, our diet quantity wise to account for any additional exertion that we make in the exercise realm. Right. And that gotcha. and it will balance itself out perfectly. You'll get enough protein as, as long yeah. as you're eating, you're going to get enough protein. If you're satiated and your body tells you, yeah, I feel great. I feel satiated. Mm -hmm. You've gotten enough because you, you, yeah. you can't avoid protein in, in, in life. It's in yeah, everything. Exactly. Right? It's in everything. Yeah. Yeah. And see, this is this is the problem where specialization, when we specialize in a particular thing, this is where it can work against us because we get very myopic in, in how we kind of scientifically approach mm -hmm. these, these fields, right? These scientific, uh, you know, fields yeah. of study where we see, okay, we see muscle mass as being very, very important for longevity, which it is. So, but when that, it, but if that's all that is taking up our focus, then what we start to do is we start to do things that, <laughs> are so focused on muscle mass that they yeah. ignore, just like you said, they ignore all the other implications regarding how they might be damaging you in other ways, but exactly. stimulating your, your, your muscle mass, yep. right? So it's like, you have to have a, a holistic kind of broad spectrum view of things. Otherwise you'll just get misled. You get yeah. too narrowed, narrowed in your focus and you, 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 you do things that might compromise other systems, other natural systems in the body um, for the kind of temporary benefit of yes, this like, exactly. muscle stimulating thing. Mm -hmm. right? Loading yourself up with, with butter and, you know, rotting chicken legs or, or, or whatnot. It's just, it might stimulate the crap out of your, your muscles because you're getting all these hormones and a flood yeah, of IGF. Sure. Yeah. You know, all this stuff, right? But it's not good for your health, right? It's yeah. not good for your longevity. There are better, or at least there are better ways to go about it mm -hmm. to get the same effect without the negative, uh, the negative implications. Yeah. Of doing stuff like that. And it's just a facet of, you know, being so removed and disconnected from the laws of nature, yeah. you know, like my backgrounds in hygiene, and coming back to the tenets of natural hygiene, I mean, if you look at those tenets for a healthy, holistic life, you know, they're all there. It's very simple. But I feel like we also, the more information we have, we tend to want to overcomplicate things when it's really just so incredibly simple. Mm -hmm. But for some reason, we feel like, oh, you know, there's more information coming out and there's this and there's that. And it's actually oftentimes works to our detriment. You know, exactly. the, more, the more information we have, the worse things can get, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. So I was, I came across one of your videos and you had, you were talking about a book by Charles, D is it DeLacy Evans? The yes, How yes. to Prolong Life? Yes. Which yes. was so like, I would love to talk about that a little bit because that's like just on the topic of longevity, mm -hmm. because that to me makes so much sense, you know, having these like these compounds that are in the body. And to me, I was thinking about, well, that makes sense as to why as we age, we lose our flexibility, you know, it just really resonated with me. So, you know, and again, this is going to be in complete in, uh, contraindication to some of the other <laughs> Sure, yeah, uh, mainstay sure. mainstream but we're not kind of we don't i'm not talking about that on this channel not really i like to i like to ask the question because i think it can become very confusing for people because mm -hmm. they are out there on youtube and as they're looking at your video or my video on the same stream they might have someone who's been on carnivore for 10 years and has, is telling everyone how they're thriving and so it's very very confusing and that's why I like to kind of bring up some of these things just to kind of get it out there. 
and to talk it out a little bit. But yeah, like the the book, How to Prolong Life, can you just kind of give like a little recap of what that book is about in the space of longevity? Mm, okay. There are, okay, if I, if I remember correctly, right, there are elements, there are elements in that book that have to do with a lot with fasting, okay? Uh-huh. There are um, in, in just how we conserve our strength and how we how do i say this well you know it, it it's like like what we were talking about just like we were talking about uh it's 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 a matter of not wasting the uh the body's energy with mm-hmm. with being squandered in in digesting and uh, food and yes expending unnecessary tax okay i think that's the way i want to put mm-hmm. this right how to prolong life is your body not expending an unnecessary tax or an unnecessary burden doing things that it uh, that it doesn't need to do. So right. whether that looks like excess digestion, whether that looks like excess expenditures of any other kind, whether mm-hmm. mental, uh, whether it's sexual, whether mm-hmm. all sorts of energetic influences, staying up too late, all these kind of things, right? So it's it's dealing with that right so it's definitely dealing with that conserving the energy yeah. and and um uh, and being as efficient as possible um there are other elements there that have to do with the physical encumbrances that we take on in our body and uh you know building up of the, the hard earthy minerals and hard earthy uh substances from the from from the planet that in some foods are more concentrated than mm-hmm. others that can build up in tissues and starts to clog and and uh, concretize and solidify and calcify tissues over mm-hmm. time the more of these things we take in um and then so, some food groups don't have uh, as high of a concentration of these types of really earthy minerals that interestingly if you examine old tissue and young tissue Essentially, the only difference you find between those two is a buildup of earth, mati- earth right. material, yeah, for sure. earth minerals, right? Like I mean, a product get bone of spurs the physical. and they, yeah, you know, all of these yeah. ish, joint issues and everything, and it's or yes. calcification, and it just that's why when I started looking into this book, I was like, wow, this is an amazing read because it's just mm. so. I mean, it's just so really clear that's yeah. just i mean wow it's amazing yeah 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 so that's that's the other element there is is if they kind of like examined what what really is the difference yeah, people have had this question throughout all eternity i mean sure. like you know nothing's new under the sun I mean, we're not yeah. the only ones who have, who have considered this and you know they thought about this and yeah so when we when we when we're making those comparisons we can we can see that tissue there's definitely this effect. There's this onboarding of, of, of material that characterizes old tissue from young. Mm-hmm. And it, it's, it's kind of like putting two and two together yeah. where like, okay, if we're taking in the foods that are the r- richest in those materials, then uh, something must be happening. Because you can examine, let's just say urine, like if you were to examine the urine that you mm-hmm. pass, and weigh the amount of hard earthy minerals that come in from the diet, then right. you see that you don't excrete those same uh, number of minerals if they're in their like kind of hard yeah. inorganic form. And so uh, where, where are they going? And they, it, they might be accumulating in the yeah, tissues. For sure. So the less of that we can do, then that would seem to equate in, in more and more longevity. Mm -hmm, Right. mm -hmm. And where that becomes extremely controversial in the plant based community is that the higher forms of dense earthy minerals are generally going to be found in plant in plant material, like vegetable matter. Exactly. Yeah. That's what I wanted to talk to you about, too. Yeah, that's a that's kind of a touchy subject for a lot of people. Which is a very touchy subject. You know, I think from what I can see from the book, kind of fruits at the top of that, that's going to give you the least amount of accumulation of those elements. And then working down, I think, actually meets below that if you were to just eat that alone and then vegetables and then uh, starches and grains. Right. 
So, but when it comes to vegetables, you know, that we can talk a little bit about like the, the vegetables defense mechanism and what happens when the vegetable, like if we look at it from the standpoint of, does it want to be eaten or does it not want to be eaten? And we know that fruit wants to be eaten. It has a seed, it wants us to excrete and proliferate, but it's not like that with vegetables. So like how in the, in the living food space, I guess, ideally we would want to really limit vegetables in either cooked or raw form. But there's also the element of transition where, mm. you know, they, I think they provide a good transition for people who are looking for something a little bit more rich, fatty. They can, you know, make a salad dressing and that type of thing. Yeah. But how do you feel about incorporating vegetables on the long term, you know, and what that might look like in a ratio to fruit? Awesome. Yeah. Awesome question. Awesome question. Okay. okay. So I, I definitely, I definitely don't have any problems with someone incorporating uh, vegetables into the diet for the long term. Like I don't, I don't see this as a huge issue. What there's a caveat though, that I, that I would have to attach to that. And that caveat is okay. We, we have to recognize that we are, our sensitivities are, are not created arbitrarily. There is nothing off. There's nothing wrong. The you know, creator didn't mess up with, with, with designing our food sensitivities. Right. And I, I think that the objectionable tastes and the, the kind of like repugnant tastes that we can get from food, yeah. they, I'm, a, I'm a very devoted advocate to the idea that these things are there for a very particular reason mm -hmm. and they're meant to dissuade us from the things that are not for yeah. our body, right? Are not yeah. ideal for our body. And it kind of has, we have to have some sort of internal radar for yeah. making this determination, because if we didn't, then we would just indiscriminately put whatever into our bodies. Mm -hmm. And we know that nature abhors that there's, there, there has to be order, right? The organism must be right. able to maintain its own integrity. So we have to have a barometer to, to assess this. And if we're honest with ourselves, that barometer, it doesn't respond as keenly to a, a very, very big chunk of the foods that we consider healthy vegetable mm -hmm. material in, in standard food culture, right? Yeah. So, I mean, if we're talking about like grains and any, any of the grains that you have to cook or prepare or the, the legumes that you have to cook and prepare. I mean, right away by default, these are all out of the picture, mm -hmm. right? If we're talking about vegetables, yeah, right? These are all, these are all gotten because you, you can't, you can't have a normal relationship to them if cooking and processing is required because without cooking and processing, you would run into the defense mechanisms in your right. taste sensitivities. Your body would say, or your mouth <laughs> almost physically would say, I, what are you doing? Yeah. Get this out like, of here. Stop it. <laughs> Not happening. Yeah. Like, stop it. You silly, you silly, silly man. Get like, get the silly yeah. woman. Get this, get this out of here. Right. And there's a lot of vegetables that inspire that kind of uh, resistance to, to making a meal out of. Right. I, I did a video a while ago on just like green onion. We add it to everything and, you know, nice yeah. vegetable meal, nice stir fry. It's great. Super tasty when it's prepared with all this stuff. But then you, but you take a green onion and you just bite it and eat it. You, you, you're not going to want to eat it. No. Right? It, it just inspires this, this awful, awful rejection, but other foods don't do that. And those other fo foods that don't have that effect at all, then you might be more inclined to eat those as a staple to your diet. So, right. okay. So in so circling back now to what I said in, in saying that I don't have any issue with vegetables constituting a part of the diet, what I would say is that general guideline is circumscribed by having faith in how your palate is designed. So what that means is I'm only going to ideally be taking in those few amount of leafy green, soft leafy green vegetables that don't inspire any right. revulsion that are very palatable, easy to take in just as enjoyable. Well, you're, you're not going to find a, a leafy green that's like as 
rich and of course, stimulating yeah. as like a fruit. Like you're probably yeah. not going to find that. No. Some some people are different. I'll yeah. just whatever. There's always the exception. But most, the general, yeah, yeah, the majority of people, yeah, for yeah, sure, exactly, yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. So, and those are fine, right? Those would be fine. You can you can add those to your to your heart's content. Mm-hmm. And I would also say that when we do work our, our our bodies, our sensitivities to like a state of a state of cleanliness where we are, you know, the stimulants have left, our our our, our taste buds are now kind of restored to their original yep. sensitivity. Mm-hmm. Okay, once we've done all that work, what you find is that you probably are just moving away from vegetable meals and combinations in themselves because the simplicity of having one particular food item to eat as a meal, it, it's, it starts to be a very attractive item. And yeah. that is, in fact, how all the rest of nature eats. They, they exactly. eat one particular thing at a time and, and that's it to the, the exclusion of other things. And we have to ask, why has nature seems to program this eating trait or characteristic in most of the life that we see? Mm-hmm. And it's probably because there's some sort of wisdom that we can glean from that observation, yeah. right? So when we go to uh, trying to adopt that, that, that eating obligation, mm-hmm. we find that we're going to be going after foods that are rich and satisfying and tasty that we enjoy that we can that are dense enough that we can actually make meals out of Mm -hmm. and so less and less you're going to be going and resorting to vegetables in order to do that totally because that's just what you want right yeah so when we do but vegetables do offer like a different nutritional profile Mm -hmm. right they offer just like a a different set or more concentrations of nutrition in other areas, you know, minerals and, and yeah, whatever else. For sure. So in responding to the ebb and flow of sensitivities in your body, as your body goes day to day, it's making adjustments constantly to always be, you know, at a state of balance. And it, there might be times when you're just, when you're called for a little bit of savory, you know, vegetable density. And then, yeah, of course, that's when you would just reach for Whatever it is, whatever whatever it is that you're that you're looking for, that you're right. craving, right? So a couple of leafy greens here or there to supplement your diet, great. A couple of nuts and seeds if you need just for whatever reason that density, then yeah, great. You find those yeah. and, you, and you have them, and so you're always you're always playing this delicate balance where everything's where everything's uh, just yeah in this homeostatic kind of rhythm and harmony for sure, right? So that that I I think is is fine and and will lead everybody to the to the best health that they could possibly mm-hmm. experience. And I think again, you know, if we look to back to nature, I mean, yeah. calorically speaking, you know, we really would have a hard time surviving on just vegetables. I mean, they're just they don't yeah. have the calories to provide us with what we need just to function. You know, not yeah. in the long term. So, yeah. but we can look to fruit, and we've got everything there. So. You know, if you look at it again, I'll just go back to nature, go back to the laws of nature. It just all makes sense, right? But you yeah. just kind of have to sift through all of the weeds that are out there right now to get back to it. Yeah. And I think on the topic of vegetables and the the ones that are higher in those compounds, like oftentimes the cruciferous vegetables, you know, those tend to have like a lot more oxalates. In fact, a lot of people who incorporate a lot of cruciferous vegetables will actually end up getting a lot of joint pain you know, and those types of things. And when they remove them, it disappears. Mm -hmm. But this is a topic to getting into the space. And I'm talking about kind of not for those people who are just entering the space, but who have been in the space, who are looking to maybe reach that next level, maybe fruitarianism, Mm -hmm. but taking our cooked food habits into the living food space. So And then a lot of times Mm -hmm. coming out of that and going, oh, I tried that. It didn't work for me. It's just made me feel like crap, you know, and not realizing that, you know, even though, yeah, we can consider dehydrated meatloaf made with a ton of nuts and spices and seasoning and all these things. Yes, it's still raw. And I guess Mm -hmm. in the sense of it's cooked at less than 118 degrees. Mm -hmm. However, you know, you're not doing yourself a service in the real, if you're looking to to transition or to evolve past 
where you're at because right. they're highly stimulating and all of these things. And I, I, can you speak a little bit about why that can really be a detriment in your evolution in getting to the next level? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah great questions. Yeah. Really yeah. Good, good questions. Thank so you. when we're, when we're coming from a conventional cooked food uh, diet mm -hmm. or a diet that includes lots of cooked foods or cooked and processed foods. Yeah. So, we have to know that what that is, is nutrition that is hyper concentrated, right? So it's, it's calories that are just mm -hmm. like really concentrated in, in small boluses that are in concentrations that are completely unnatural in, in, in nature, right. right? So when we, when we take those foods into our body and we habituate ourselves to that routine for a sustained period of time, or a protracted period of time, okay? You have to understand, remember, remember our body is working with the, the background formula of efficiency, brutal right. efficiency 24 seven. So if it feels like it's getting all this concentrated nutrition from a particular class of foods, what do you think it's gonna do? It's gonna say, all right, well, I don't need to really worry about being very efficient with how I absorb nutrients because right. I'm getting this mass of nutrition from the outside world. Don't, why would you waste energy being super efficient? Relax, relax, right? Relax the efficiency and we'll just worry, we'll just get everything we need from right. the vast bulk of stuff mm -hmm. coming down the chute. Okay. So all of a sudden now that person changes to a, they get inspired, they see some videos, they read some literature, yep. they want to go on a raw food diet now, okay? And that's that's what they do. They make this switch and their, their body is still operating at the same level of devitalized or diminished or vitiated efficiency than, uh, that it was when it was on the cooked food diet. But now that you're eating raw foods, the, the character of raw foods coming in is not nearly as concentrated. Right. right. It's, it's dilute. It's sparse. It's in the concentrations that nature seems to prefer. So you're going to have this temporary period where you need, where your body is going to be kind of scrambling a bit where it, it's not efficient enough to be able to get everything you need from the, the right. more or less concentrated raw foods. Mm -hmm. So the mistake we make is that we resort to the, the, the ultra processed, the mock meats, the, the, all the vegan junk food that you were, yep. that you were talking about, mm -hmm. all the different ways that we can hyper, hyper, either stimulate or concentrate raw foods to, to satisfy that, that gulf, mm -hmm. right. That, that deficiency in us, um, deficiency is probably the wrong word because that has other, you know, yeah, um, I, connotations. I know what you're trying to say though. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That lack of yeah. efficiency, that lack mm -hmm. of, of, um, uh, absorption, absorptive right. efficiency, right. So that's a pe that period of time, we have to be very careful because we're, we'll fall into the trap of believing that it's the diet that isn't working. Exactly. And, and, and then people get the wrong idea. They say, oh, raw foods don't work. Mm -hmm. It's not that they don't work. They work. It's just that your body has been uh, brutalized by your lifestyle for countless years. Right. And that is the problem. It's always mm -hmm. the problem. <laughs> It's all, yeah, it always comes back to that. Oh, yes. It's always what we have done to ourselves. It's very, 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 very rarely anything else. So um, the first thing to do is know that that's the case. So right. we have to know and anticipate that, okay, I, I, I get that my, my body, there's going to be a period of adjustment here mm -hmm. and we can, we can use, we can use little tweaks to help us negotiate that period of adjustment. Right. We can use whole food, there are whole foods that are more concentrated just, just by nature mm -hmm. that we can kind of emphasize in the diet to help us get through those, those periods of time when we still are yearning for a bit more concentrated right. nutrition, because we're, we're still reeling from that, you know, from the old mm -hmm. hangups of the cooked food diet. So that's where it becomes very useful to do things, to use things like dried fruits. Okay or dry, uh, nuts, nuts and seeds, uh, yeah. avocado, uh, the rich foods, like the durians, the jackfruits, right? All of these rich, rich foods, 
yeah, th we can now kind of, all right, creatively use those things and add them to our diet, supplement our diet with those things as we need in whatever right. way we need until you naturally re start reclaiming more and more a bit of lost efficiency. And then your reliance on those things will slowly start to, you know, wane yes. a little, you know, it'll naturally, naturally. Yeah, it just happens organically. Yeah. You know, work itself right out. Uh, not that it needs to go out. I say, oh gosh, mm -hmm. I say out. It doesn't need to come out of your diet completely. I'm just saying it will tend, your body will tend to balance and regulate right. around the things that it feels are best, right? Mm -hmm. When you're introducing only the the cleanest whole foods into your system. Right. It's like the, the na nature takes care of all the rest. So mm -hmm. we have to know that A, we're going to, if we're coming from that cooked food, processed food diet, just understand that you're going to be, you're going to be kind of craving more quantity because the stuff was so concentrated in the beginning and raw foods aren't very concentrated. Right. Save for a couple of those elements, like I just right. described, avocados, you know, nuts and seeds. Mm -hmm. um, so, so know that that, that might be the case and you are allowed, right? Guilt-free to mm -hmm. use other types of whole food in more concentrations right. to make up for that as you, as your body becomes cleaner and cleaner. And cleaner. Mm -hmm. And so probably, you know, if uh, someone is getting into the living food space and say they are somebody who's just coming in straight off a cooked food diet, then my, I mean, for the way that I see it, I think that implementing a dehydrator is probably in the end going to be like just being things harder just because, you know, it's just another thing to get addicted to yeah. <laughs> when we start making crackers. <laughs> like they're great and amazing. Like it tastes amazing. Right. But. Now we have like, we're already trying to deal with the cooked food. Now we've got the addictions in the raw food. It's like, yeah, right. Yeah. So it's like, I would kind of steer people away from that. And like you say, maybe you implement some smoothies that, you know, yeah. by all, yeah. you know, and use some frozen fruit, which isn't the best thing, but like you, yeah. that would be much better than the combinations that we see in a lot of these cakes and breads and nut mixtures and everything. Exactly. And then also the food combining side of things, which for some kind of gets a little bit confusing, but I think it's equally as important to, uh, to implement that. Uh -oh. So we were just talking about the, the implications, I guess, of bringing the cooked food habits into the raw food lifestyle. Yeah. And, and I was just about to ask you about food combining and the importance of that as well. You know, there's all kinds, there's lots of books about about food combining, I think that it makes a huge difference in, in the way of gastrointestinal issues that can often come up for people right. as well. So how do you feel about really learning the tenets of proper food combining? S super helpful. Super helpful. Mm -hmm. it's, it's helpful even if you make no adjustments to what you eat. Okay. That person out there that's eating whatever, anything goes. If you... But if they were to verse themselves very, very, very uh, strictly on proper food combining, changing absolutely nothing about what they ate, even that is enough to make noticeable differences in how you feel in, 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 in your health. Right. Just on that, right? So, it, I, I, yes, if you're asking me, extremely important, extremely important. Main t going up the ladder a little bit now, if we're starting to pay attention to our food combining as we as we get into raw foods, mm -hmm. even better, right? You're going to save right. and conserve even more energy and more energy. Mm -hmm. Essentially, if I had to put it in a nutshell, when when we pay attention to proper food combining, what we're doing is we're avoiding enzymatic clash, like digestive right. chemistry enzymatic clashes in digesting one particular food or another particular type of food. And we're trying to avoid our body having to compromise the type of digestive chemistry that it releases so that nothing is, is going down the digestive tract uh, without being properly digested. Right, so got you. That, the, that's the reason why you are food combining is mm -hmm. you're trying to avoid the improper digestion of your food. Got and you. so there are ways to combine your food that, uh, that minimize that the, the potential for that. Uh -huh. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. 
Yeah. So, and then, you know, another thing that, you know, it's really important for sure, the gut microbiome Mm -hmm. and the place of fermentation in that space as well. What are your thoughts on fermented foods like kimchi and kombucha and these types of things? (laughs) Yes. Yes. So, yeah, we, and I, I had a, I had a fun little video that I did with Professor Spira. Oh, cool. On my channel about, about oh, that great. subject. Oh, great. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. We really, we really uh, jumped into it uh, because it's a good question. Yeah. And you seem to be uh, very talented at, at, at asking Thank good you. questions. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you. So, <laughs> so yeah. Uh, okay. Micro, um, gut health and the and yeah. fermented foods. So here's where I'm coming from. What I would say is that we ferment, okay, populating our gut bacteria with the, with the, with the gut microbes that we need to be mm-hmm. healthy and well, this, we, we have to understand if we're, if we're being on, again, if we're being honest with ourselves, right, we got to recognize that this is something that we would have no capacity to assess in right. any natural setting, right? Mm-hmm. We would, we would never have any way of, of, monitoring what our gut microbes are doing, how they're right. reacting to what we're doing in our, in our life. Mm-hmm. The, the tools that we have to assess what is best for us are, are other than that, right? We it, it, see our job, our responsibility is to take care of paying attention to our sensitivities, to develop a proper relationship to what is food in the first place. And if you do that job correctly, right, which is the intention of nature, because yep. right? I'm always very interested in what is what is nature trying yeah. to express mm-hmm, right in, in the life right that starts to become very important because the more you can harmonize with proper uh, proper laws of, of creation proper laws of nature the mm-hmm. less likely it is that you'll screw up right the yep. less the less margin for error you have okay in 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 diet so Fermented foods. I'm getting back to it. I haven't forgotten. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So in worrying about what is food in the first place, that is, a, in my opinion, a far more important and pertinent question to ask, right? Because mm-hmm. if you pay attention to that, everything else will take care of itself, right? That you see, that becomes the realm of uh, of another intelligence that kind of mm-hmm. takes care of how your 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 gut microbes are uh, right. developed in response to the good stuff coming down the chute and when if you if you just pay attention to what is best what is going to happen inevitably by default is you're going to cultivate the, the the exact microbiome the exact environment that is that is best to dealing with the type of food that you're that you're eating so as long as you're not not causing any any trouble digestive right. trouble bad food combining this plays this plays mm-hmm. a role as well or eating things that are just outside of our the bounds of our physiology uh-huh. you're not doing any of those things your, your your gut microbiota is probably going to just completely take care of itself oh, yeah. just as it does for every the millions upon millions of species out there mm-hmm. and for many of the you know the populations of uh, human populations that that have lived outside of the influence of kind of modern day culture where they just they, they don't worry about any of this no they're just they're just eating eating food and just living. that's it right yeah. and living and they don't yeah. have any of the disease the rampant disease statistics that we do in modern society and culture why is that right? okay so fermented foods um Fermented food is essentially spoiled, rotted food, right? It's rotting food. It's food that is uh, that is undergone or starting to under undergo the process of degradation, decomposition, rotting, right? Yeah. And there are byproducts of fermentation, of decomposition, of rotting that we naturally, naturally, when when we're when we're hit with them, we find them. We don't. <laughs> There's a displeasure. There's a there's a revulsion. There's mm-hmm. there's a, an antipathy that we have to things that are rotting, degrading, uh, broken down. Yep. You know, the, 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 we don't like those that type of stimulus, right? And your your natural reaction to things that are rotten is to spit them out, right? Mm-hmm. Because you can detect 
the, the, the byproducts in there that are not uh, good for nutrition. Yeah. Uh, for your body, I should say. Yeah. You know, things like byproducts like CO2, right? You don't need, you don't want to be putting extra CO2 in your body. It's a waste product. Alcohol, right? Mm -hmm. This is what vinegar is. So any, any vinegar product, I don't care whether it's white vinegar, apple whether it's cider apple vinegar. cider vinegar, it doesn't matter <laughs> what kind of vinegar. Yeah. It, it just means it's alcohol. It's, it's, it's rotting natural organic material. And you, it's very counterproductive to put those things into your body when those are the exact things that your body is scrambling every single day to get rid of, to, to, right. re to release from your body. All alcohols are, are, are poisons. Your body doesn't want them. And so they're acidic. They're going to congeal and congest tissues in your body. They're going to produce mucus. We don't want those things yeah. in our body. Now, the reason we eat and take in fermented foods is we're told because they cultivate good bacteria, because all these bacteria are responsible for breaking down dying material. That's, right. that's the role of bacteria in nature, right? They're, they're degraders. So when we're eating fermented food, it's because we're focused on what cultivates the, the microbes. So we think, okay, well, we eat foods that have loads of microbes. Yeah, they, they, yeah. It's, again, it's that exactly what you were talking about before, that lack of holistic thinking, right? Mm -hmm. Take in mm -hmm. all the considerations, not just focusing yeah. on the microbes. And uh, so that's what we do uh, in in hopes of populating what we imagine is, and I'm not saying that that's wrong, right? But like good bacteria, right? All back, all the bacteria are good. They're all going to be. They're all decomposers. They're all yeah. breaking stuff down. It's yeah, just that you place. don't want to attract the wrong, the 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 type of bacteria that break down bad things because that creates symptom uh, symptomatology, yeah. right? right? So, but they're, they're all good. You, you want them. I mean, if they're, if they're resulting. I mean, they're in all in nature for a reason. They're all know. there for a reason. Yeah. Yes. They're all there for a reason. Right. So that's a different subject. I don't want to digress. That's yeah, a whole different that. subject. Yeah. 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 That's a different thing. So, but getting back to fermented foods. Yes. Okay. So there are, there are class of foods that are, they're, they're controlled rotting. Fermented food is controlled rotting in a controlled environment. Right. Whereas rotting outside in, you know, in the open air, you're kind of letting the air kind of oxidize the food. And mm -hmm. so it's a rot that just kind of breaks things down uh, in an uncontrolled way. Yes. And, and you let the natural forces of de degradation take over. And that's when you really, it makes itself obvious that you don't want this stuff. Like a right. rotten apple on the, on, on the grass, you, you don't want you to touch it. You're not going to eat it. Yeah, the smell, the taste, all of it, the look, yeah. it just it, it, it rings true with your with your conscious intelligence and you know that that's not food anymore. Don't eat it. <laughs> exactly. Don't eat it. Yeah. So, it's good to know that the only difference between fermented food and that, that that rotten apple is that fermented food is has used now a human contrivance to control that process. Right. That's it. Right? But otherwise, we're still taking into our bodies not necessarily the most ideal food. Ferment, fermented food, its utility is that it's a survival mechanism. Mm -hmm. It allows us to preserve food for long periods of time. Right. That is the only reason why we ever started using it. Right. It's not because it was the most ideal food. It's because it was storable food when we didn't have refrigeration. And you do that in human culture long enough where humans do things like migrate outside of their natural right. habitat, right? Mm -hmm. Something that no other animal does. So now we have to find intellectual ways to live in that, in, in that habitat. Mm -hmm. And so we, we do things like ferment our food and keep them in containers, bring them along the, the, you know, the, the marching path with us. To, uh, if we're nomads, that's what we do, right? Mm -hmm. We ferment milk and the goats and all that. This is what you do to survive. Okay. But, it's just that that's hung around in culture for long enough that we've convinced ourselves that this was proper human nutrition. Right. It's never been proper nutrition from day one. It's yeah. just, that's what we did to survive. So we have to start growing up a little bit, you know, mm -hmm. maturing a little bit, you know, investing. Evolving a little yeah, bit. Like it, let, mm -hmm. let's, let's evolve a little bit. We have, we have enough 
luxury in our environment now. We have access to so much in, in the modern world, in the modern mm -hmm. world. We have access to so many options. We don't need to be relying on these old, old, old human cultural food hangups anymore. Like we can evolve to <laughs> actual living yeah, food. Yeah, we don't we have don't to eat rotten to, food. <laughs> no, you don't need to do that. You don't need to do that. And you, but you certainly don't need to do it in order to cultivate good bacteria. Yeah. Just eat raw living food. That is the relationship. The relationship that we that was programmed into us is you eat the right food, your gut microbes adjust beautifully and harmoniously to that. Right. That's the relationship. It's so easy. Like you don't have to think about this, right? Do you think that the reason why there was such a push for the fermentation is because of that like looking at okay, well it has a, the ability to preserve and somehow exactly. that got translated to preserve the body? Ah, okay. I preserve okay, you 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 got it there. Preserve. In a sense. Right? Mm -hmm. It's if if you can okay, in the modern world, if you can preserve it, it is a it's a commodity. It's a good commodity. Right. Right. It's a food commodity now. Mm -hmm. So that makes it very attractive. You, you, it, 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 that's why that's why wheat is such a is such a you know prize prize crop because it's storable. It's mm -hmm. easy. You know, flour lasts forever and ever. Right. It, it's it's a market. It's a market commodity. So if it, if you can preserve it, great. Right. So that's that's one reason. And and as soon as the market really likes a food, then the science starts to corroborate a, a market preference. Right. Right. You, mm -hmm. you just get into this whole slew of commercial science where the, the food companies just buy out the science buy you know, fund them for whatever whatever result that they, they want. And you have some commercial science and and that floods all these like stupid, you know, Google. Right. Yeah, you know, you know, Google articles that you see on page one. You know, what are the benefits of fermented foods? All these, all these like hip hoppy, you know, like pop culture websites come up. I'm like, oh my god, you know, fermented. It's so it's all it's all that noise. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the reasons I to say one of that. That's one of the major reasons why we still have the, the fermented food. And did you, you had mentioned you, you were about to say something else. I think I interrupted you. No, uh, I was, it was, I was just trying to kind of that preservation piece of what, yeah. what the mindset is like right. knowing that obviously nobody wants to sit down and eat, you know, uh, drink a jar of vinegar that would right. make us sick. Right. I mean, right, it's right. just that, but where's the mindset in thinking that translates into health? Like, where did that come from? Yeah, 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 that, yeah. So, and you had said, yeah, does it, is so it So the like, whole preservation piece of like, is that must have been kind of where yeah. they just took that and put it into actually what it means to be healthy. Yes. And, and right, because oftentimes yeah. those are things that are listed in the top, you know, top 20 things to eat for health, Right. you know, right. and all of those items are listed in there somewhere. Yeah, yeah, no, you got it. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah, you had mentioned it. Yeah, preserve, like, okay, this stuff is preserving the food. Therefore, it's going to preserve my body if I if I put it in my right. body, right? Yeah, it's that exactly. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and, and, you know, that we find that mistake all over the place, right? Sure. Where it's, you know, our, our body produces it, we need to eat it. So, you know, milk, you need to drink milk in order to produce milk. Right. But that's not how it works at all. You don't need to, you just need to eat food and you know, you, you're able to produce milk uh, and you can go down the whole laundry list of things that your body produces and fluids your body produces that you don't need to eat in your diet yeah. to, to exactly. Up, right. Exactly. So, yeah. So we, it, it's kind of, it's a, it's an, it's an old human kind of cultural tribal thing that we, that we misled ourselves with. You know, uh -huh. we must eat the blood of this thing to sustain our own blood, <laughs> right? You, you, like that, that, yes, it's a kind of an old hang up from that. Yeah. So I can see how people would make that mistake, right? Oh, it's preserving the food. It's therefore going to preserve my body. Yeah. Well, no, it's going to, it'll kill your body faster yeah. because it's starting to congeal and, and dehydrate mm -hmm. tissues inside of you. Yeah, you could do that. But I mean, formaldehyde does that. Job sure. really, really well, but yeah. nobody's drinking. Nobody's putting that in their smoothies. Yeah, 
Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, formaldehyde in the smoothie, right? Yeah. It'll preserve you. <laughs> and I'm sure and I'm sure I could, you know, we could launch a marketing campaign right now where yeah. we convinced people that formaldehyde was was great we could, for your body. We could because microdose it, from formaldehyde. It, you got it. Microdosing formaldehyde. That's it. Right? Yeah. That's the new thing. That's the new yeah. thing. And you could, you could, you could convince people that this was health sustaining. Yeah. yeah. And, and and people might believe it, right? Yeah. And I mean, I feel I've talked about this a lot in my in my past podcasts about the health span versus lifespan. Mm -hmm. And, you know, everybody mm -hmm. wants longevity. Everyone, especially once you get to maybe not in your twenties, you know, you don't really care about that. But like as yeah. you're aging it becomes more important. And yeah. so while well, we want to have health span in that we can actually age in a way that we're not decrepit and we're not bedridden because there's a, such a difference, but getting to that place, it's just, again, it just comes back to there's so many st strategies from all kinds of different people out there and it becomes incredibly confusing for most people. But really mm -hmm. it's just the simplicity of just looking to the laws of nature, going back to what's simple and things just become. And then I, again, and I was going to ask you too about your spiritual, spiritual practice and how important that is as well to be able to also sustain this way of life. Cause I feel like being in touch with our spiritual side and having a connection with that makes this so much easier. How, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah. Yeah, no, that's that's great, and and I think I wanted to I wanted to say really quickly, like, yeah, I, I definitely agree with that. It's I, I, what I wanted to touch on really quickly before I before I jump. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that for sure. It's just you know, like like you said, and you've been bringing up right, this this process can be can be daunting at, at, mm -hmm. at first, and the development that you do make though is is so worth it. It's so 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 very much worth it. So very valuable. And it would be easy to see, like, I mean, you know, I come on, I'm coming onto your, onto your platform here and talking about these things. And uh, when people meet me for the first time, it's, you know, it's really easy to make the mistake that this is just, you know, I, I, I they'll see a, a, a fit, a fit person, right. And say, like, oh, you know, how did you, how did you develop, how did you develop your, yourself? Right. Right. And it's interesting. It's like, oh man you're seeing like the end stage of a long process of kind of like breakdown from, yeah. from a place where I was before. Yeah. And yeah. So when like, you'll have athletes and whatnot that, that, that ask me, Oh man, okay, Eli, how, how do you maintain yourself? And I know I'm drifting a little bit off. Topic, no, it's fine. I love this. Keep going. But I'll, I'll, Yeah. We'll get back to that. Yeah, I just yeah, wanted to sure. add this little bit. Yeah. Here yeah, absolutely. So yeah, they'll they'll ask me like, oh, how did you know? How did you how did you do that? How do you maintain this diet and build yourself up? And like, so people will always get the wrong idea. And it's like, oh, okay, how do you build all all the the muscle that you have on your lifestyle? And it's like, no, you you're missing it. I didn't I'm not necessarily building up to where I am now. This is the end result of a of a long process of whittling down and fine tuning, right? right? From from way too much to now a, a lot more reasonable uh, right. a mass, and and what it took for me quantitatively to maintain that lifestyle prior to and do all the gymnastics and all the martial arts and all the you know yeah. the, 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 all the physical things. Yeah. Made. How much bulk re food I, I required and the character and the quality of that food that I required in order to do that. And now this very day where I'm doing all of the like same things, all the same things, the same amount of activity I'm doing throughout the day, except now I'm doing it on such a, so much less yeah. in, in terms of like variety, not variety, types of food like, be beyond raw food, like just fruits, all, almost all fruits, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, for, for many people, uh, a, a week, two weeks, three weeks, a month of only fruit is is a serious radical cleanse. Uh, uh, that sounds like Tuesday to me. Yeah, right. right. That's and, just called and, life and for you. That's just that's just that's that's life. And so, it what is okay? Here, here's the point. Here's the point: is that it becomes very, very, very valuable 
to be able to cultivate a simplicity in life that in, improves your efficiency, your bodily efficiency, right? And allows you to not rely on and have to have um, reliance on to be uh, dependent on all of the different kind of cultural yeah. food contraptions that culture tells you is necessary. Yeah. It's li it's so in incredibly liberating and you, you, yeah. you gain power, like you gain a power of freedom of, and independence from these things that you, you know, you would just have to describe uh, experience for yourself. Yeah. Or you really know, you know, and all of that culture. energy you can put and funnel into other more productive other things, things yeah. than wondering what am I gonna, what do I got to pick up from the grocery store to make this twenty-five ingredient, right? You know, spaghetti or whatever you're gonna make, exactly. right? It just yeah. takes all of that out, so you're left with more actually more time to be exactly. more productive. You're not having to worry about you know all of the issues that plague us. Like you don't suffer from the fatigue. You don't have the two o'clock crash. You don't have issues, you know, setting your alarm to snooze 15 times in the morning, all of these things. These, this is how a lot of people live, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So exactly. it just takes that completely out of the picture. So yeah, I mean, it's just, but again, it's just that, you know, find out what your why is, immerse yourself in all of the things, books, videos. I mean, we, we're so lucky now, you know, I never had this ability when I was in my 20s to go and look at YouTube videos and podcasts and you know you really had to try to find a book and but now there's really no reason where why you wouldn't be able to because mm -hmm. it's just out there if you want it you can find the information it's so easy that's right yeah. so one more thing I just wanted to ask too about well actually two because I I did want yeah, to just exactly. touch on your spiritual yeah. practice and what that looks like and how important things like meditation. Um, I think, like I said earlier, I, I feel like once you start implementing um, this type of uh, way of life, like headed more towards the fruit side of things, it just yeah. organically happens that right. you want to kind of be more connected. And as those blockages are being removed, it just happens organically. But in terms of making a practice for you, right. how does that, what does that look like for you? Gotcha. Okay. So first thing I'll say is that a lot of the interest in your, in spiritual and higher development that will, there's going to be a lot of that, that starts to be automatically generated and automatically cultivated. Once you start cleaning up your, your physical self, right? There, there's a component to this type of, to this type of spiritual development that is just paired inextricably from your physical. And the second you, you, you make, progress in that in that realm in that sphere it's going to translate to more interest in spiritual development and that is just something that happens because there's no such thing as separation right all right. all of your bodies are connected so you're gonna find that you you'll be more interested in things that are of a higher nature right once you start right. really 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 uh, getting into the uh, into the thick of um, mm -hmm. of healthy lifestyle practices. Okay. So, so that's one thing. Um, so yeah. even, even if you, if, even if you have no spiritual aspirations, you're probably going to find that you're going to be getting more in touch with yourself. You might have more uh, potent or profound dreams, you start remembering dreams. You might have sensitivities. You might see synchron, um, more synchronicities happening think, in your life, yeah. right? You've probably noticed this too. Oh yeah. Like, yeah. These little synchronicities. Uh, uh, for those of you not familiar, a synchronicity, it, you think of something, you, 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 you think of a particular song, you do something in your life, yeah. and then in some completely unrelated avenue of, of, of life, some completely other unrelated aspect, someone else reciprocates that yeah. same thing that, exactly that same only thing. you knew, right? And so you're like, what? How did, you, how did that person know? That type of thing. Yeah, it okay. happens a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So anyway, a, a lot of, a lot of things you might start to notice change in your life. All right. When you start right. to make these changes to the physical now in terms of, uh, of the practice. Yes. Uh, one thing for sure that I'm always doing is every, every time I'm going to bed, like to sleep in the evening, I'm initially, I'm not actually just going to bed every single time I lay down it's exciting because it's an opportunity to see what what I can, what type of imagery 
conjures up in, in, in my mind what mm -hmm. type of inner practice starts to play around in the blackness uh, behind my right. eyelids, right? There's, there's over time, you start to get good at being able to, in, to kind of calm yourself down, stay alert, stay attentive, let yeah. your body kind of drift away, but do work, right? Either use uh, some auto suggestion, whether mm -hmm. it's reviewing, maybe whether it's a concentration exercise, like reviewing all the events of the day. See mm -hmm. if you can recall them in their colors, in their details, yes. and, and it, just going through your whole day and remember every single thing you did at every single step of the way. What that does is it does a lot, right? It, it enhances your concentration ability, um, your ability to, to work in your non-physical vehicles. Uh, it, I, I know I'm not defining all these terms, but- That's okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, that's one thing. So in the, in the evening when I, when I go to bed, I'm, I'm always doing some like work in that sense upstairs, you know, just trying to work on visualization, work on imagery, work on anything I can while, while I'm drifting off to sleep. Right. Okay? In, in the morning, very often, if it's early enough, if I'm wake, if I wake up early enough, that's when I try to do a lot of my projection projection uh -huh. work, right okay. so either lucid dreaming or an astral projection mm -hmm. um that tends to be the best time to do it like early early early, early in the morning, morning. Mm -hmm. yeah i'm not a pro at it i'm not successful at it all the time mm -hmm. but but i'm but i've gotten better at yeah. having it more consistent i just had another one a couple of weeks ago super exciting and it's this it's if you don't if you guys aren't familiar with it just just Google it. Just yeah, what is it. astral projection? You'll find mm -hmm. lots of stuff and it'll help you uh, flesh out what it means when we, when we talk about that stuff. So that's, that's the kind of like bed, bed routine. Uh, on top of that though, yeah, usually what you'd want to find is either sometime in the morning or sometime before bed where you can just quietly sit and do a type of meditation practice. There are many types of meditation practices that you can do. Um, I I like to do just the stillness, like stillness, yeah. stillness practice, where I'm creating imagery that I want to see show up in my life, mm -hmm. right? Or if I want to ask questions and and have questions answered in my yeah. life, maybe one thing I could do is just sit down, be with the question or the problem. And then uh, at, like, let it ring through your mind, like kind of like a bell, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So it's like, imagine the question is a bell and yeah. sit in calmness and stillness so that there's no stimulation. You quiet your thoughts, just worrying about your breathing. Um, this area between your nose and your, and your top lip, mm -hmm. this area right here, mm -hmm. some, uh, there's a helpful technique where you only focus. See, if you, if you breathe in, Right, you can feel the air kind of move past this area. Right. Like you can feel the air current just yeah. like tickle this this Yeah. And it becomes a sensation when you're breathing that is easy to focus on. So if you're trying to the point is if you're trying to sit and be calm and mindful and right. oh, mindful, not mindful as in paying attention to all the random thoughts that you could uh -huh. conjure up. But if you're trying to empty your mind, uh that becomes a good place to focus on. So you would just Put all your consciousness into this right. area right here and just feel and be with the in-breath and the out-breath, right? So let's just say on this meditation, that's what I'm doing. Then I would do that. And in that quiet state, then have then 10 minutes or so, once, once you're all settled, ask the question, right? What is that question that you want answered? And then that question it kind of reverberates. You let it kind of ring through your whole body, mm -hmm. mind and just wait for what happens, right? Make no prior judgments, no, 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 just try to accept whatever with whatever comes and you, you might find some interesting answers come your way, right? Yeah. That's, That's just an example of a type of meditation I could do one day. It looks differently on other days. Some other days, let's just say I want to, I want to do work on something physical, right? Like mm -hmm. a physical skill at the, at the right. gym or, or a movement. 
then you could use a meditation to do a, a hundred repetitions of that movement, right? And feel mm -hmm. your nervous system, feel your body doing whatever it is you're doing and being very successful with it and do it in your mind. Yeah. Uh, you are actually, make no mistake about it, you would actually be exercising physically. Like it's, yeah. it is physical exercise to do that. And when you go and do it the next day, the visualization that you did, you would be shocked at how it can help you. Yeah. Right? Because you're yeah. stimulating your nervous system when you do that, which is what you use when you're doing activity. Yeah. So anyway, so it could be a whole combination of things. So if I were to summarize, I would say my practice looks like bouts of meditation, uh, just quiet contemplation meditation, either before bed or early in the morning. And then when I actually go down to, to bed to lie down, I, I'm using that time as well right. Right, to try <laughs> to do more internal work. Sometimes yeah. it gets exciting. Oh, like there are times where it's just like so Probably exciting. Like, up. oh my God, I can't wait. Because you're, you, you know, the last night you, you lay down and you had all of this beautiful imagery come up. Like you can, you can start to conjure this up very quickly. And when I say conjure up, I'm not talking about your imagination, but you're you, you, really all you're seeing is blackness behind your eyelids. That's not yeah. what I'm talking about. I'm talking about putting yourself in a state of mind where you are actually not seeing black and just having imagery work out in some other higher imagination mm -hmm. you're actually seeing like you're watching yes. tv on, on an led panel <clears throat> behind your eyelids and actually tangibly seeing rolling you know rolling streams over rocks and and a, and a windmill and yeah. you're there and then there's an animal and then there's a, whatever it is right actually see having those experiences like on a, on a nightly basis that can start to get really exciting, really damn quickly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, it just becomes so real, you know, it yeah. is literally yeah. like it's happening. You yeah. know, you've, you've got like a front row seat to exactly, you know, yeah. whatever you happen to, whatever you want, you know? Right. And so just, you know, on that note, closing on that note, I just, again, I just wanted to quickly mention again that, you know, eating in a way, that nature intended allows the body to be more of a conduit, I feel, for these experiences to happen. It just removes the blockages and there's just an awareness that comes with that, that unless you have experienced it, you can't describe it. So yeah, for sure. So I have one final question and this is a question that I ask all my guests. So I just want to wrap up with this question. And the question is, what is your authentic life print what is your unique expression in the world as eli my unique expression in the world my unique okay. expression in the world that's a good question Thank it's a really you. nice question i like that one i think i think my unique expression in the world would would be one of the 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 beauty and the harmony of of simply surrendering to obedience of uh, of, a, of an authority that actually does love you mm, right i love that i i and i think there is an ease and a simplicity and a security right it's funny we're always looking for security in life right mm -hmm. we're looking for a type of security and there's there's no security that affords you more actual physical and spiritual security than doing your job and being obedient to the to the higher laws of nature god mm -hmm. however you want to word it right yeah. and being obedient to those laws of morality right these are also these are also laws of nature that we can recognize do exist and the more of these that we start to align ourselves with the 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 more splendor starts to characterize mm -hmm. our life and i Beautiful. think the what i'm what I'm trying to give to the world, right? What, what is my expression that, I'm, that is characterizing me is a, a, a championing of an advocacy of that phenomena, that, that process. Wow. That's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Really thank beautiful. you. Yeah. yeah. It's, it, it's, uh, yeah, that's a good question. I really, really like that question. Yeah. Well, you know, I feel like everyone's here. We all have like, we're all on the planet and we all have a role to play. And it's yeah. like, you know, to be able to 
realize and know that we are all unique. You know, mm -hmm. there's never going to be another Eli. There's never going to be another Shirley. Like we all have our uniqueness and to be able to hone that and to really tap into what that is and to really understand it, I think can be really powerful for people too, who are, don't know what that is. Cause a lot of people, when you ask them, they, they're like, well, they define themselves as their job or they define themselves as their roles, but they don't actually do the self inquiry to really, yes, but like, who are you, mm -hmm. you know, and yeah. you know, what, makes you light up and what makes you what's your expression so exactly. yeah but yeah thank you so much for coming on today i absolutely love this chat with you today yeah. and um how can people find you if if I, i'll link um your instagram and but do you have like a website or what how can people get a hold of you if they want gotcha to? yeah thank you so much i i really right. appreciate the time really appreciate the time and thank it's you. always a pleasure for me to chat about this kind of stuff with yeah uh, with people. for sure so yeah thank you thank you thank you very much people can get in touch uh, no i don't have my own website no i don't have my okay. own website i just have my youtube channel and my instagram those are those okay. are pretty much the two platforms okay. that i use most often you can also find my my youtube channel backed up on BitShoot and uh, odyssey so okay. BitShoot, odyssey youtube uh the free melon society that is is the channel name so you can find it on any of those platforms and on instagram my handles free melon underscore eli yeah that's kind of just yeah, keeping uh keeping some uh, glimpses of the lifestyle you know okay. just exercises i do a lot of fitness related stuff on the on my instagram um okay. just yeah little bits and bits and pieces that are fun okay that's fun so cool share. and i'll link all that in my show notes as well cool but cool. yeah Thank you so much for being on the planet and <laughs> spreading this amazing word for everybody. Yeah. Oh, pleasure's all mine. Thank you so much. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much. I appreciate the opportunity and I hope everyone got, uh, got, yeah, got some sure. value out of this and yeah, you guys keep, keep being healthy and yeah. God bless. Yeah. yeah Love you all very much. Okay. Bye.